Welcome to the second part of uh, session two, module one of this uh, course, uh, application of GIS in conservation mapping. Uh, in this session, uh, we will be looking at, uh, we, we, we are continuing with target three deep dive. We will be looking at uh, protected areas uh, to understand what they are. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, OECMs uh, we already mentioned OECMs in session uh, in part one, but you were looking at it uh, deeply just to understand what they are and the significance uh, in, protect, in protection and conservation. So uh, we start with protected areas. So protected areas uh, uh, is uh, defined as a clearly defined geographical space, recognized, dedicated, and managed through legal and other effective means to ensure long-term conservation of nature with associated ecosystems and cultural values. So uh, protected areas includes national parks, uh, nature reserves, uh, marine protected areas, wildlife sanctuaries, ETC. Now IUCN has categorized uh, protected areas into uh, seven categories. So the first category is uh, category 1A. So category 1A <coughs> are strict areas, uh, strict nature reserves. So these are areas where there is a very minimal human interference and uh, they are very much restricted. Uh, they are only allowed for uh, scientific research and monitoring. So the second category is wilderness area. Wilderness area are large areas that are uh, unmodified or slightly modified. Uh, and then the second category two is uh, national parks. National parks are large natural or near natural areas for ecosystem protection. And we have uh, uh, category three as natural monuments. So these are unique, uh, these are areas with unique features. Uh, category four habitat or species uh, management areas. So uh, these are areas where we have uh, a bit of uh, human intervention just to protect uh, specific habitats of uh, specific importance or maybe species of specific importance. So category five is a protected landscape and uh, seascapes. So these are areas with significant ecological or biological and even cultural values. And then category six is uh, protected areas with sustainable use of natural resources. So these are uh, areas where uh, extraction or uh, maybe harvesting of uh, uh, natural resources are allowed. For instance, fishing, uh, hunting and gathering, but it has to be uh, sustainable. So what are threats to protected areas? So protected areas are threatened by uh, high rates of deforestation and uh, land use uh, change. We have also illegal wildlife trade as a threat to the protected areas. Uh, climate change uh, effects, floods, uh, droughts, etc. Poor management and funding gaps. So most protected areas are uh, managed poorly and also the gaps in funding. Now we look at uh, what other effective area-based conservation measures are, OECMs. OECMs are, uh, are areas that are not protected areas, uh, but they deliver uh, uh, conservation uh, objectives. So they are protected for other reasons, but uh, they, 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 in the long run, deliver uh, long-term conservation. So protected OECMs are just complementary to protected areas. They offer complementing uh, roles. They offer corridors to wildlife, ETC. They focus on uh, biodiversity, conservation outcome. Their main focus is biodiversity conservation outcome is, uh, is, is not their main focus. Eh? 
eventually uh, they will uh, achieve conservation outcome. But the primary objective might be something else. So uh, OECMs, uh, the concept of OECM was adopted uh, in uh, decision eight of COP, COP 14 uh, that uh, was held in 2018. So the COP, the decision was aimed at establishing a criteria for recognizing uh, OECMs. What are the similarities between protected areas and OECMs? So they all have to, uh, they all have a defined boundary, geographical boundary. Uh, they also have a, a similarity in terms of uh, governance and management in that the governance and management has to respect uh, the rights of uh, indigenous people, local communities, uh, ETC. They all contribute to in situ conservation. And then management uh, of uh, this both, or both management of both the protected areas and OECMs uh, achieve, integrates cultural, spiritual, and even other local values. So IUCN has established a criteria for <coughs> identifying uh, OECMs. So, and this criteria uh, includes uh, having effective conservation and biodiversity values. So areas that have uh, effective conservation and biodiversity values, we have uh, areas that are governed uh, to ensure equitable governance and management. Uh, we have areas, th those areas are also not protected areas, but they achieve uh, outcomes that, are, that can be compared to the outcomes of protected areas in terms of conservation. And then the areas must be recognized uh, through transparent processes. And, and then lastly, they have a long-term uh, maintenance of biodiversity values. So uh, what are the governance types for both protected areas and OECMs uh, according to IUCN? So we have uh, four governance types. So the first one is uh, governance uh, by government. So here the, the national governments, subnational governments, or even delegated uh, organizations, organizations that, are, that have been delegated by the government to protect or to conserve uh, those particular uh, protected areas. And then we have uh, the second one as a shared governance. So shared governance applies to trans transboundary resources. And then we have a pr private governance. So these are protected areas governed by individuals or NGOs, non-government organizations. And then the, lastly, we have governance by indigenous people and local communities. So these are <coughs> uh, governed by people who live within those ecosystems. Yeah, an example is uh, community conservancies. So what are the benefits of uh, OECMs? So OECMs are help in expanding conservation coverage in that uh, they provide uh, uh, corridors for wildlife. They also connect uh, protected areas that have been legally identified uh, within countries. So the second one is uh, they they engage diverse stakeholders. So OECMs, uh, like uh, community conservancies, they ensure that uh, all stakeholders are involved in management of uh, pro and conservation of protected areas. So they support sustainable livelihoods. Uh, they fill ecological gaps and corridors. They provide corridors for wildlife. So they enhance resilience in terms of climate change. Uh, and then they recognize, they recognize diverse governance. So what are the steps to identifying OECMs? 
So ECMs, the first step is a preliminary mapping of candidate sites. So the sites, we say the ECMs must be geographically defined uh, boundaries. So preliminarily, you have to map the candidate sites, then do stakeholder consultations and assess the rights, uh, the right holders and the owners, and then evaluate uh, OECMs against uh, evaluate the candidate sites against the OECM's criteria, and then document, documentation of governance and management, and then lastly, uh, official recognition of uh, the candidate areas as uh, OECM's. So what are the potential areas uh, that can be mapped as OECM's and conserved for uh, wildlife conservation or bi bi biological diversity conservation. So the areas include indigenous community, indigenous and community conserved areas, and uh, sacred natural sites, military training grounds, watershed zones, uh, watershed zones, private lands with conservation agreements, and uh, fishery no-tech zones. So categories of biodiversity indicators. So what are the biodiversity indicators? Biodiversity indicators uh, are metrics that are used to assess uh, biodiversity. So one, the indicators are in, uh, categorized into three. So we have species-based, we have uh, ecosystem-based, and we have genetic, genetic diversity-based indicators. So under ecosystem, uh, under Species-based, uh, we have indicators like uh, population trends, we have a red listing index, we have bird species richness, and uh, ecosystem-based, we have uh, habitat fragmentation and loss, we have uh, land cover change indicators. Genetic indicators include population size, uh, genetic variability, ETC. So in conclusion, uh, protected areas and OECMs are complementary. We say they complement one another. Uh, they form a landscape uh, all together. And then they, they have clear, they must have clear definition. Definitions and governance are also critical. And then uh, key biodiversity indicators provide measurable outcomes and monitoring enables adapt adaptive management and improved results. Uh, thank you for following through the session. Uh, for questions, maybe you can visit our RCOE community and uh, move to the next level of training.